Hi, good afternoon. Um, welcome to this uh, tutorial. It's supposed to be a short tutorial. It might not end up being a short tutorial, but um, we'll uh, we'll see how, how verbose I'm going to be. Um, so over the last few weeks during lockdown, I've been um, creating uh, one-man choral videos. Some of them have been uh, relatively simple and straightforward. Others have been a little bit more complex. Um, it's been a huge amount of fun to uh, record and produce them, uh, mainly because I'm sort of looking for creative outputs. My 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 day job, if you like, is as a as a conductor and a, and a pianist. Um, so since this COVID nineteen crisis has uh, has has kicked in, um, all of my choirs have stopped, and I've, there's there's four four rehearsals I've run a week, and they, they they've all stopped. So um, looking for some creative output, both for myself, but also um, it, the the people who sing in my choirs, um, my understanding is that they've got a a great deal out of enjoyment out of producing these videos, which is uh, which is um, really nice and encouraging to hear. Um, so uh, it started out as a sort of creative project, creative outlet. Uh, I have since set up a, a Patreon page, and some people have very kindly sponsored me uh, to continue um, making these these videos because uh, obviously income is taking a hit and it's all very uncertain. So um, if you are in a position to do that, you've and if you've enjoyed the content and you would like to um, to sponsor me, then. Um, there'll be details in the in the description of the video as to how you can go about doing that. But I want to stress there's um, there's no obligation to do that. I'm still going to continue to make these videos freely available for everybody. Um, so just a, 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 a an option that's there if you if you were so inclined. Um, now a few people have asked me how I go about using this, uh, how I go about making these these videos. Um, and what you know, what software do I use? I know a few people have said, "Am I just using a cappella?" Which is, I know is a uh, an app you can get for, for certainly for iPhone. Um, and I I used a cappella a long time ago. Um, well, I think probably when I first got an iPhone, and I found it was slightly limiting in in what it could actually produce. Um, and uh, I, I I didn't didn't really want to go back down that 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 road. Um, so I've done a slightly bespoke um, method of of creating these videos, uh, and I'm going to talk talk you through that that process uh, now. Now, for the purposes of this video, I'm doing a, a hymn, uh, a hymn tune. It's going to be uh, unaccompanied, um, unaccompanied hymn. It's going to be "Come Down, I Love Divine," the tune of um, "Down Ampney." Now, whether you're doing accompanied or unaccompanied. It all starts with a skeleton piano um, recording, either an audio recording or a video recording. Um, if it's a video record, if, if 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 I'm doing an accompanied piece, it'll start off with a video so that I can potentially put the, the playing of the piano in the video as well. Um, but if it's going to be an unaccompanied, then it can just be a an audio recording. Now, for this, for the audio recording, I use my iPad. I just use a, a normal iPad. There's no special microphone. There's no magic camera. It is just the camera that comes with the the iPad. Originally, I started out using in uh, the iPhone um, because a lot of the time I'm, I'm reading the score off my off my iPad. Uh, my phone recently had a uh, decided it wasn't going to work anymore. My my brand new one month old phone. Um, so I've got a temporary replacement, which is an older model of iPhone, um, which uh, the microphone isn't isn't quite as good. So um, I, I'm using my iPad at the moment. Um, so uh, I'll start off with a with a piano skeleton. Now, I'm not going to play all of this, but just to give you a, an idea of what it looks like, uh, this is a piano vid. So to say, it's all very rough around the edges. I'll turn the volume up a little bit. Um, now, if I was going to have this accompanied, then it would be important to have the video on display and then I'd edit it later on. But the most important thing here is the sound. And I'm just doing a single verse of Come Down, O Love Divine. My iPad's on the stairs videoing it and what's really important about this is that the tempo is perhaps quite a bit slower than I would normally um, do do this piece I'd normally do it a little bit quicker but the reason for that we'll talk about later on is to do with adding the, the post effects in the in the sound edit um, so that's um, that's the, the the opening video that's uh, come down I love divide now the first thing I've got to do is convert this into mp3 because this software that I've got in the background is a program called audacity now audacity is a professional level um, software and it's completely free complete um, freeware software 
Um, so once you've got Audacity, I'm going to show you a few basics of, of how to how to use it. But the first thing you've got to do is convert your um, your video. If you've got a, if you've got um, a voice memo, it will be in an M4A format, certainly on the iPhone, um, which Audacity can't read. So you're going to need to convert it into a, uh, a, a format that Audacity can read. Fortunately, we've got a piece of software that can do that for us. Uh, in this case, we're going to use VLC Media Player. Again, VLC Media Player is a free piece of software you can just download. I think a lot of people will have it on their machines as standard. There are probably other, soft, other software that can do the same job, um, but VLC is what I'm going to use. So we open VLC. Um, and we're going to convert our uh, piano track into an MP3 track. To do that, we just go media, convert, save, uh, add. Uh, I'm going to find it so it's come down, videos, and piano vid. That's what I'm going to do. These ones I've all pre-recorded. I'll talk about these in a minute, the, um, the other vocal parts. I'll talk about that process shortly. But just to save time, I've got them all um, sorted on the computer already. So we're going to bring in uh, piano vid hit convert, save. It's a bit of a weird process. You have to hit browse to give it a file name. I'm going to stick it into a different folder, MP3s, and we're going to call this piano MP3. You hit save and you hit start. It's going to do the conversion process. Then we can close the LC down. Go into our MP3s and there we have piano MP3. If we Okay, so we've got our MP3 now. Again, I'm sorry, I had to make a little cut there because we're having some technical sound problems. I'm going to bring my MP3 into Audacity. And there's the piano track on its own. Uh, I'm just checking that this is picking it up and it does appear to be, which is good. So there's my introduction, uh, which actually won't be on the final video because I'm just going to do it as a, uh, an unaccompanied choral piece. Um, so yeah, there, that, that's, the, that's the first step of this. So we go through the conversion, we have the video, we convert it to MP3 and we throw it into Audacity. What now? Well. Uh, you will have noticed that I've already uh, pre-recorded the videos here. <clears throat> now, the thing that um, is, is particularly key to this is that you've got um, eight uh, videos for um, four parts. And that's because I record each of the parts twice. It gives it a thicker sound. And there's a certain safety in numbers. And the, the very first one I did, which was the Hallelujah Chorus, um, in fact, before that, even uh, when I surveyed the Wondrous Cross, I did it with just a single voice part, and it ends up sounding quite thin um, and not particularly well balanced. So having two of each, it, obviously it means it takes twice as long to do it, um, but you've got, um, you know, it sounds more like a choir. And we'll get into the effects and, and everything else with them later on. Uh, but just to show you one, I'll, I'll show you the soprano one just to show you uh, how... How awful it is. So again, this is just um, the iPad camera. I've got a hymn book in my lap and I've got the iPad leaned up against my computer desk here. I've got the headset on because piped through the headset, I've got that piano track that I recorded earlier on. So I'm listening to it, but because the microphone won't be able to pick that up through the headphones, um, it, it won't record the piano part. It will just record what it can hear. So it will be, you don't need a, a particularly special headset like this one, um, you know, a normal pair of, of regular ear, ear pods will do um so that's uh, that's what's happening here and that's why um this microphone is like that um it's it, it's up there because i'm not actually using this microphone to record the sound because this is a headset mic it's good for talking but it's not very good for singing as some of my earlier videos um i am using this microphone and it's it's not very good uh the, the sound it's got an, an automatic um uh sound I can't remember what the technical word is, but basically it, it doesn't sound great. Um, so I'm using the just the iPad. Now, the, the microphone on my iPad is very, very good. The downside of it is that it's so good that you kind of need total silence around you. So anything like very often I've got my family who will be in the kitchen doing stuff um, or, or in the next room and it will pick up everything. Um, so my advice is to try and do it with as, as quiet as you can. I generally try and record when the when the guys are, are out walking the dog or something. Um, but uh, yeah, the dog has interrupted on more than one occasion as well, especially on piano videos. So, um, But that's all it is. It is literally just the video recorder of the iPad. There's nothing special, no clever microphones. Um, and I listen to to the track, the um, the, the piano part that, you, that I've just played a minute ago, and I will just sing through each of the parts one at a time. Now, my falsetto isn't particularly good. It's okay, but it's not brilliant, especially if I'm doing it um, relentlessly. Now, 
I'm doing a sort of a one man thing. I've worked with um, Kira a few times on, on, on a couple of videos as well. This does not have to be limited to being a one man thing. So if you've got a group of people or if you've a member of a choir that you wanted to take part in this and do it like this, you can do it in exactly the same way. And it doesn't have to be complicated either. You can just get somebody to video themselves singing on a device in a quiet room while listening to a prepared backing track and likewise the backing track doesn't have to be you playing the piano you can be singing along to another recording of the piece as long as the microphone doesn't pick it up and it only picks up your voice then you're absolutely fine to do that um so another reason for doing everything twice is because as you can hear my falsetto isn't very good especially when it's when it's raw here and there are no um effects on it um you'll you'll hear when, when, when he starts, here we go. So I'm listening through to the piano part in my in my headset there. And as you can hear in the raw form, it actually sounds pretty not very good. Um, but there's something magical about when when multiple voices come together it makes it greater than the the sum of its parts as it were uh, or, or the individuals are not as good as the sum of its parts so to speak um and then when you start adding the the sound effects and stuff into it as well um then it, it, it takes on a whole new level um so that's that's the process of actually recording the individual part it's literally just sat in front of it listening to um a recording of either your backing or um another recording uh, and and you just sing your part. That's all there is to it. Into a uh, an iPad or an iPhone or something or a, a smartphone device. Um, it then syncs up to the iCloud. That's the part that's a bit tedious because it takes a, a little while to do that. And then you download all the videos. Now I've done that already to save time, so I've got the the eight videos all lined up. I haven't converted them yet because again I want to show you how I go about the process of converting them. You can convert multiple. So again I've opened VLC, uh, Control R to go convert save. If you're not there, it's media. But save. Now you can add multiple, so it will convert them all at once for you. So if I just select all of these, apart from the piano one, because I've already done that one, and go open, convert, save, and this time it will name them for you, so you won't be able to browse. So if we then go start, and it will go through each of those eight videos and convert them into MP3 format, which is the format Audacity can read, which is the, obviously the format that we want to, to go with. So uh, we'll just give that a second. Depending on the power of your computer, this may take a, a little bit longer for you. Now, you may have noticed that the lengths of the tracks are all slightly different times. So we're going to get onto the syncing process. That's the first thing we need to do before we start doing anything. We need to sync them up. Um, now, when it does do this, it calls them exactly the same name. So obviously, these aren't vids. These are MP3s. It's going to move them into the MP3 folder so we know where they are. I'm not going to bother renaming them now because um, it's just for reference. But they're not videos. These are now just raw um, audio tracks. So if I load that up in MPLC, you can hear me singing there. Um, we can close that down now as well. So we're going to go through these one at a time. And the thing is, we've got to sync it up with this track and then remove the track afterwards. So let's take my first soprano track. Um, now, when we put it in, you'll probably find that it's not exactly automatically synced. But there's my introduction. And then we get there. So you hear I'm massively out of sync there. And the reason for that is when I did the recording originally, I chopped this beginning bit off. Um, so now, it probably won't be perfect, but it'll be a lot closer. So you can hear the soprano line is just slightly ahead. Uh, Something I haven't actually said um, distinctly yet at this point, or discreetly, if you will, um, is that the sound and the video are actually two separate components in the version that I do. Now, you can just chuck all the videos into a video editor and just do the sync once in your video. I like to do it separately because I think Audacity is much more powerful at giving you um, effective control over the, the after effects that you're going to put on it and also getting the, the fine tuning of the synchronization right. So this will actually be all mixed down into one single audio file and then that will be resynchronized with the videos later on. Um, but first things first, let's just get this audio synchronized. So as we said, the soprano is slightly ahead. Um, which means I need to chop off a little bit more off the beginning there. And <clears throat> let's see if we're any closer now. 
So again, we can hear the soprano is still marginally ahead. So we're going to have to go the other way and actually generate some silence so that it moves the soprano part down. So if you just select somewhere before the singing starts, and because I've done this in a single take, once it is synchronized, the whole thing will be synchronized and I won't need to go back and edit it later on. That's the advantage of doing things in one take. For this, I've only done a single verse. So uh, let's just generate uh, a second of silence. So you'll get the option here, generate silence, and it's going to generate one second. Now, I'm obviously going to be way too far ahead there, but I can now start to take it backwards. So it's going to select and delete, select and delete. And we just click and drag to do the select and delete this bit. I think I got pretty close there, actually. I'm pretty happy with that. That's close enough for me. Uh, bear in mind, this will be muted, but that is now going to form our baseline of, no pun intended, of where we're going to actually um, aim to get to. So if we bring in Soprano 2 now, uh, and we'll see, there's my Soprano, oops, I'm about to stop. Here's my Soprano 2, and you can see Soprano 2 is slightly ahead of Soprano 1. So I'm going to need to repeat the process here, generate silence, um, and for me, you should be able to start working out roughly how much silence it was. So I'm just going to generate half a second this time. Oh, no. It's still slightly too far, so I'm going to need to chop back a little bit. Oh, no. Still not quite together, so let's chop back a little bit more. Oh, no. Still not quite there yet. Um, so as you start having to remove smaller increments, um, then you might have to zoom in a little bit. Let's see if that's any better. Not quite, a little bit more. It's very, very close now. might even be close enough. I'm just going to zoom right in and delete just a fraction more. Um, and we're going to hear what that sounds like. Now, it will never be perfect. This is the thing, because you're doing the parts in isolation. Um, I mean, it's difficult enough to get choristers to sing absolutely in sync. Um, if you're if you're in a member of a, an, an Amdram choir, if you like. It's difficult enough to get choristers to sing in sync um, you know, when you've got someone waving in front of you, when you're doing the parts in isolation, uh, it becomes very, very difficult indeed. So don't worry if there's stray consonants all over the place. You want to get it broadly so it's close together. Um, I'm going to talk through one more, um, the, the next auto line, and then I might do the last one as well um, to, to show you what's going on here. And then I'll probably skip out the chunk of the video. So you don't want to see me uh, synchronizing every single part individually because the process is the same. Uh, so let's take auto one. And again, we can see Alto 1 is actually coming pretty close at the beginning there already. So let's just hear what that sounds like. So Alto 1 is just slightly ahead. So again, let's go generate silence, but just going to generate 0.25 of silence this time. See if that brings us in about in alignment. Sounds about right to me, actually. The next line. That actually sounds pretty spot on to me. Um, so let's go Alto 2. Now a little trick you can do is actually if you solo one line that you're trying to sync with a line that you know is in sync, you can hear it just in isolation and see. It makes it a bit clearer. I think the tenor just needs to have a smidge taken off it. That's better. 
And you can already start to hear as the parts come together what this is going to sound like. And this is before we've even got to After Effects. So let's try it with tenor two. Finally, bass two. Let's bring bass two in and we know we're going to need to generate silence already here. So let's put that in at the start. That looks about right to me. Let's just hear the basses together. That sounds very, very in sync. Good, I'm happy with that. So, from here, we can now actually remove that piano track. Um, everyone is making all the noise in the kitchen at the moment. Um, so we can remove that piano track so we don't need it. And this is where we now start the, the fine-tuning and the tailoring of this. Um, so first things first, I'm going to chop off this great vast amount of empty space that's here at the beginning, because we don't need that. Uh, and then two bass parts as well. All of that is just empty space, so we don't need that. We highlight that and we can delete it. The next thing I like to do is put a little bit of a fade in at the beginning because it just makes it sound a little bit more professional. So actually, I'm going to take off just a fraction more, actually. Um, and you want the fade in to ever so slightly overlap the first sound you hear. So here, we're just going to go boosh, 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 boosh. And you hold shift to do this, by the way, to select multiple tracks. Seven, eight. So hold shift and select multiple tracks. We then go effect, fade in. And you'll now hear at the beginning. Oh, I've actually gone slightly too far there. So let's just undo that. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to extend the fade in rather than delete. So I've just undone that because I've deleted slightly too much. Go down here and we're going to go just make that a little bit shorter maybe. And effect, fade in. You hear all the C's at the beginning. Somebody not wanting the conductor. Yep, happy with that. And likewise, we have to do the same at the end. So first of all, let's chop off the dead space at the end, which is the the end of the recording. You've got to bear in mind where, when you're chopping off, where do you want the video to end? So do you want to have, um, you know, the, the 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 singers just sat there for a time at the end, or are you going to go straight to a to a fade out. So we're going to select those, we're going to delete that as well, and then we're going to do the same thing with the fade out. And this can also help um, if you've got end, uh, people coming off in slightly different places. So I've slightly overlapped the end of the sound there. You see the end of the sound is where the bar is just that little bit thicker. And we just go effect, fade out, and now we hear the ending. That's actually not a very good fade out, that's slightly too much. So let's bring it to about there, maybe. Fade out from there. Now, this is where it, you start getting into the territory of how much do you want, how much of an effort do you want to put into this? There's a, a way of cheating the fade out to make it a little bit um, more um, sound a little bit better. What I'm going to actually demonstrate now is is that, and to do that, you're going to select the end of them so it overlaps all the parts. So at the moment, if I just cut this here and then play, you'll hear the sound will just suddenly stop, which sounds horrible. But then if you add a fade out, and this is a cheap and nasty way of doing it, this isn't the way I would do it um, properly, but this is just to, to show you a quick way of doing it, is you then put a fade out over that, which again doesn't sound great because you don't get the last consonant. The best way of doing this is the time consuming way, and you've got to find the offending parts. So. So it sounds like they're one of the soprano parts. So that one there sounds like she's over singing. She's over singing. And one of the tenors, I think it was as well. Uh, looks like it's a little bit long. Uh, that, or maybe it was an alto. Um, and when you do that, you just chop off those individual ones and then fade those out. So rather than doing all of them, you just fade out the ones where they were singing a little bit longer than everyone else. And then you'll get this effect. <laughs> Now you can hear there something is still not quite right there, so it's probably that alto. You can solo it to, to double check. Um, that one? Yes, it is that one. So you can do the same here. Chop off the end, 
and put a little fade out on there. And there's one more of my... It's that one there. So again, chop off the end and a little fade out. And here there, it's not perfect. There is still a, a slight element of a fade out there, but it's better than it was. Okay, and you've still got enough of the NG on the end of um, bestowing. To make it effective. Um, of course, you can do it without the fade out and just have just cut the part slightly short and you get this. Which, again, I don't like as much because you've got that rather audible clunk of the sound finishing. Um, so that is, you know, depends very much how much attention you want to give to the detail there um, as to, to how much time you want to spend on that. For this, as a, you know, this is a very, a very quick mock-up. Um, this is, um, this will do for me. I'll do it. Okay, so next is the exciting bit where we make it sound amazing with uh, the, the after effect. Um, now, one thing I'm not going to show you in this video is how to do pitch changing. There are a few times where I've recorded it and I've heard a note is very flat. You can go in and actually just change an individual note. So let's just take this note, for example, in the soprano line. I, I say I'm not going to show you and then I immediately show you. That's how I operate. So that note there, let's just say that note was very flat. If you go effect, highlight the bit you want to change, effect, change pitch. And it normally doesn't need very much. It normally needs something like 2% um, to bring that up, 2.5%. And the difference that makes. So you see, I wasn't actually that flat, but that has really. You can hear how how sharp that's made that note just on two and a half percent. So little subtle changes, especially if you're doing stuff in in falsetto or you're singing in a register you're not used to. If you want to do a a, a one person thing, that can be very very helpful. Uh, change pitch, but the key things you want to do are the as follows. First of all, Control A will select everything. The first thing we're going to do is actually bring the volume down, because if we do the steps that we actually need to do in order to make it sound good, um, you're going to end up uh, spiking it and, and, and clipping the tracks where, and that's where you get static, which isn't a good sound. So first of all, select everything, effect, amplify, and I normally start by taking it down um, five, so minus five on the amplification, and you'll see it all goes a lot quieter. Don't worry, we're going to put that back again afterwards. You then go equalization. This is probably the most important part um, that I only discovered very recently. Equalization, what this does, it makes the um, the high the higher frequencies and the lower frequencies a little bit louder. So it just makes it really pop. I discovered this when I was first getting into podcasting. And the um, it, it makes your voice sound like it's on the radio if you're talking. And it's probably something I will do to, to this um, track as well um, at some point. I'm getting very meta now talking about the tutorial that I'm in. Anyway, um, these are the settings that, that I use. You're free to play around with this, but this is the gradient I use. So I put the lower frequencies up to about 18, and then you have the curve down to about 500 um, and set that at, at zero, up to about 3,000, still at zero, and then curve up 10,000, up at about 15, I think. Yes. So that is the curve. Um, so if you want to pause the video and have a look at what, what it's doing, because the standard one is just a flat curve. That is the one that I have found works really nicely for choral stuff and for speaking. Um, someone, I'm not a sound engineer, though, so someone who, who is will probably tell me why that is all completely wrong. But for my experience, uh, that, that works really, really well for me. Um, so you hit OK, and you'll see it just like, looks like they slightly thicken out. Now, the next thing you want to do is the reverb. Now, this is the part you can have a lot of fun with, but it can also be the part that breaks it if it is not done properly. So again, select everything, effect, reverb. Now you are going to want to experiment with different uh, reverb settings. There are three that I tend to use and I've saved these in user presets. You get some factory presets, which I don't think are all that good. They're okay for little effects if you just want to get up and go, but I, I found they're not particularly uh, great sounding for, for this uh, choral sound. So I've got three user presets that I've done, Choral Blend, Choral Blend 2, and MT Blend. MT Blend, um, it's actually Music Theatre Blend, is when I was doing my, my Music Theatre ones. It just gives it a nice sort of sonority without um, drowning in a, in a big cathedral sound. So that would be a standard one, and that's actually one that's set up there. Um, so room sizes are 80, pre-delay at 10, reverb at 65, damping 50, tone low 100, tone high 70, wet gain, dry gain, negative one, then stereo width at 70. Um, that's a good 
general sound. For something like this, though, it's more of a choral blend. Now, these are, are damper acoustics. Choral blend 2 is a really, really damp sound. Um, 140, 65, 50, 20, 75, 0, negative 12, and 100. That I use for if I'm doing polyphony. So when I do, uh, when I did um, If Ye Love Me, um, I think I use this. Um, it's a really, and Kiss the Bands, I think, use this one as well. It's a really, really wet acoustic, and you've got to record stuff really, really slowly. Um, and I think for this, it will probably be too much. Um, so for this one, I'm going to use Choral Blend, my original one. So you see the room size is a little bit, a little bit lesser. Um, those are the settings you use. So if you want to note those down and put them into into your thing. But again, feel free to experiment with different levels of reverb as to what you think sounds right for your particular recording. But for me, uh, again, if you want to pause it and just jot those figures down, that is the uh, that is the, the setting I use uh, of Coral Blend One. I call it. Um, and if you want to come up with your own and then save it, you just go manage and then save preset, and it will give you the option to to save it for for future reference, future um, videos and, and recordings. So hit OK. Uh, this takes a little while to apply. And you see it's all gone very, very quiet now, which is which is good. And again, we're going to fix that a bit later. In fact, we'll do that now. Once you've done that, the last thing is you go back to Amplify Effect, Amplify. And if everything is selected, it should default to the highest level it can go without it clipping, um, which is what you want to, want to what you want to select there. So in this case, 7.8. Um, and you'll see I now get my nice full bars and nothing clips. And so when we hear this now, um, I think I may have made a mistake here by adding the reverb. I'm going to have to do a fade out again at the end. Yeah, I, I've done this wrong because I shouldn't have done the the, the end bits first. Uh, so I'm going to undo all that and put my endings back on. Uh, because otherwise, we're going to have all sorts of trouble with fading it out. Um, I'm a consummate professional here. Um, so let's just go back to standard endings. And actually, when the reverb is applied, it might not actually make that much difference. So there's my standard endings there. Uh, I'm just going to very quickly reapply those effects. I'm not going to talk you through them again this time. Um, but uh, go back and watch the other part if you want a reminder of how to do it. So amplify, equalize, uh, reverb. and amplify again. And this is the point where you should trim the endings um, and put the fade outs on after the fact, after you've done all the effects. So I'm just going to go through and, and pop these on again now. Um, so that in fact, you could probably do all of them um, similarly. So select them all and then effect fade out. So now they've all got a, a similar fade out, but that's fading out silence, which is... So it's not great. I'll go back and fix that later on. Uh, but here's what you've um, you've actually uh, created now. I am actually just getting a little bit of clipping there. Um, there's one of my videos open in the background that is now going to hover up because my computer's weird like that. Um, I'm actually going to bring the amplification down because it's slightly loud and I'm getting a little bit of clipping so let's try that again So you can hear that fade out at the end sounds pretty terrible. But actually, it's come out really nicely. Um, one thing I am going to do, despite saying I thought the reverb was too much, um, would be too much with the other one. I am actually going to try um, my other choral blend, because I feel like it maybe could even do with just a little bit more. And then we go uh, amplify again. 
Let's take a four and hear what this sounds like. Actually, that's much nicer, isn't it? It gives it that sort of cathedral acoustic. Um, now, I need to fix this ending because it's not particularly good at the moment. So I'm actually going to make a slightly longer fade out. Um, see if that actually solves the issue of it sounding not very good at the end. Give it a nice long fade out. So, okay, what I ideally want is actually more sound at the end to fade out into. Um, I've cut that a little bit short, um, which is which is my bad. But, um, yeah, that's probably the good as it's going to get. It just sounds a bit, bit naff, doesn't it? Um, let's get rid of that fade out, because I didn't like that. Uh, yeah, without going back and completely re-editing the whole thing, um, I, I think uh, I'm going to have to accept that for what it is. So let this be a lesson that actually you want to leave some empty space at the end. Don't trim the, the beginnings and the ends too soon. Otherwise, you're going to end up in a situation where you haven't got enough to fade out into, especially if you're adding lots and lots of reverb. Um, it's going to sound a little bit um, anticlimactic, I suppose is the word. So the last thing uh, you need to do before you export this is to edit the uh, levels. Now, as a general rule, because I'm uh, a sort of natural choral bass, my bass lines are always very loud. Um, it's the part I'm most comfortable with generally, um, and it's the part that comes across clearest. So I always turn the bass down, and generally in choirs, you would find yourself in a situation where you probably have got more sopranos and altos than you have tenors or basses. It's just the way of um, modern, modern choral societies and modern choirs. Uh, not always, I would stress, of course it's not always, but very often they are, choirs do tend to be top heavy. Um, so <clears throat> I'll turn my bases down, so let's take them down to say minus four, and you can do this in the gain settings over on the left column, and it's just about tweaking until you find a level you're happy with. Tenors I take down, but not quite as much, so tenors are gonna come down to say minus two. Um, altos probably gonna stay where they are, and sopranos, I'm gonna bring them up to plus two, and we'll see what this sounds like. Altos are a bit loud. The sopranos is just a fraction louder, so they don't need to be amplified as much as that. Put them back down to default. Maybe plus one. Too much tenor now. Now that sounds okay to me. Um, I've done this a few times, so I've, you know we get used to changing things quickly. But as an idea, the higher the the voice part, that's the louder you want it to be to get what sounds like an effective choral blend. And I'd normally just listen through to it twice, and then make tweaks based on that. That's good enough for me. And then finally, once you've got it at the level you want, you're going to affect amplify. And you don't want to maybe bring it up to the max, so I'm going to bring it up just 1.5, just to give it a little bit of an extra boost in the sound there. And then you're done, uh, well, with the audio, certainly. So to finish off, you go File, Export Audio. Uh, I'm going to stick it into Come Down, and we'll go Come Down Mix. And it sends, it exports it as a WAV file. Um, I was put .wav as the extension on the end there. Hit Save, it'll mix down. Yes, that's fine. That's fine. You can fill out those um, ID3 tags if you like. And um, then you'll get...
And that's how you do it. That's how you do the audio. So I'm going to take a pause there and I will carry on a bit later on with how you go about editing the video. Um, I know there's quite a lot to take in there and a lot of that I am making uh, possibly more complicated than is necessary, especially if you're new to uh, recording in the software. But a very quick summary. Um, skeleton part, either recording a piano accompaniment or a previous recording that you're singing along with. Sing each of the parts in isolation, ideally in as quiet an environment as possible, just to an iPhone or an iPad. Um, and um, yeah, keep it, uh, do each part, do each part twice. Uh, import them into your computer, convert them using VLC into MP3 format, bring the MP3s into Audacity, synchronize them first of all by generating silence or deleting space where there's too much. Once they're all synchronized, you can start adding the effects. Um, equalization is very important. Reverb is important and very much a matter of taste. And then amplification, making sure it's not clipping. Then you trim the endings. I know I did it the other way around and you saw the result of that was that it ended up being uh, not, not, not having a great ending. Um, but there we go. And then export. So I'll come back a bit later on and I will do the video part, which is broadly the same same exercise, syncing everything together, um, except it just uses a different medium and a different piece of software. So I will pick up again um, a bit later on. Okay, welcome back. I'm saying welcome back, even though the video probably hasn't gone anywhere since the last cut, but I've had a roast chicken dinner in between, which was very nice. Um, so I'm back with the second part of this tutorial, which is how to get your uh, freshly mixed audio synced up and in the layout with the videos. Now I'm using this piece of software, which is called Wondershare Filmora. There'll be a link in the description as to where you can download it from. Um, there will be different pieces of software that will do the same or a similar job to this. Um, some are free, some you will have to pay for, um, but this is the one that I'm going with, Wondershare Filmora. It's the one I've used for all my projects. Um, it's a relatively simple video editing software, um, but it does enough for what I need it to do for, for this uh, series of videos. Um, so uh, when you start off, you'll have uh, you won't have anything in your project. Um, so far, I've only got uh, one up there. That's the first half of the tutorial, which I'm sort of editing at the same time. Um, but we'll get to that. Um, so uh, I've started off because I've just copied a, a previous template from uh, one of my uh, other videos that I've done. I have the same title card at the start, and I just changed the details. Uh, on this. Uh, because you might be using a different piece of software, I'm not going to go into the details of, of how to use Wondershare, uh, particularly. Um, a lot of this you'll just have to sort of um, have, have a play with, especially if you're using a different one. I have a feeling this is actually an older version of Wondershare anyway, so um, it, it may be uh, outdated anyway. But um, So I just put a little title card on the front and I've got my um, uh, patron thanks at the end there. And again, those both updated as and when they uh, well, obviously, the, the title card is updated for every video, and that's updated whenever have any new patrons come in. Um, so in order to um, bring stuff in, I'm going to, in order to start editing, rather, I'm going to have to bring some stuff in. So first of all, we're going to get our fully mixed track, which is called Come Down Mixed. Um, we drag it in here, and then we drag it onto the audio plane down here. So at the moment, we're going to have this. We have title, fade in. Laid out. And then there's our audio track. It's going to move that up to the end so that when it fades out, we get straight to the, uh, the card. Okay, um, so now we need to start adding um, the videos in. So let's go to uh, our project folder and in here we've got the videos so these are the videos that we didn't use earlier we only turned them into mp3s and that was it uh, i'm not using this piano video so we don't need to bring that in but it's going to select all of these and drag and drop them in now one of the things that you'll notice when you're doing a video edit like this is that it will play if you've got lots of videos going on at once so like here for example i'm going to have eight videos within um the uh, the player up here which you might not be able to see actually because i've got a webcam over it um, so I uh, might turn the webcam off at some point. Right, so I've turned the webcam off so that you can see the full the full screen. Now I've got my eight videos that I've uh, I've dragged into here. Now the thing you'll notice when I'm doing multiple video stuff is that it won't render it in time. It will take a long time to render, so it will look out of sync. So a large part of the, doing this video edit is actually done 
through through listening. Uh, so what I'm going to do is first of all bring in this SOP1 video and first thing I'm going to do is add a fade in to it. If I forget to do that later on that'll be really annoying. Um, and now we need to sync this up so that it's in line with this backing track. So you can see here I've not started singing yet so I'm obviously a long way out of sync and there I am. And you can hear I'm a long, long way out of sync there. So I'm going to have to trim the beginning. And again, this is a really fairly tedious part, actually, of this is actually finding the trims and editing them into the right place. So it takes a little while. Um, so I might skip a large chunk of this part of the video once you've got the, the once I've shown you the uh, basic premise of it. But it looks like I start to sing about there. So if we split, delete, Drag back. Not quite. Let's drag it back a bit further. So now he's a bit early, so we zoom in and we drag him this way. Still a bit early, so we drag it forward a bit more. Now he's still a bit early, so let's go a bit more forward. That sounds about right to me. So once I've got it synchronized, I mute the video so that we don't actually hear any audio coming from this video track because it's all, remember, coming from our single mixed audio track there. But we can hear it in the mix there. And we trim it so that it is there. And then we repeat the process for the other seven videos. Now, I'm going to start by getting them all synced up, and then I will do the layout. Once I've got one of them synced up, I will switch the video off, and then bring in the next one to avoid the um, the issue I mentioned before about it not looking like it's in time. Um, so let's find this roughly in the right place. That's where he's about to start singing, so we can split that there, drag it back, and try that. I think it's just a fraction late, which means we need to go earlier. Like that. Now it's a fraction early, so I've gone slightly too far. That's close enough for me. So we tied a uh, sync it up with the beginning of the other one. We add our fade, and it's made, important you add the fade before you start resizing the video, because otherwise you have to add the. If you add the fade on after you've resized it, it sets it back to the default in this program. So, um, which is an enormous pain. Um, so there we go. That's in sync, and we can now hide that video. And we repeat this process. Notice I'm going down in parts. So I'm going on to the auto next. A lot of people comment on the shirt. Um, this is actually the, uh, the the Persephone's chair logo. Persephone's chair is my. Um, I make. Uh, computer games in my spare time. Um, that's the name of the studio. Um, it's called Persephone's Chair because my cat, who is called Persephone and is lurking somewhere, likes to sit on the chair that I'm sitting on, my office chair, because she finds it very comforting and warm. Um, so it sort of became her chair. And so, yeah, Persephone's Chair became the name of the studio. My wife designed this logo and I've got lots of different t-shirts and different colours. So apart from, the, you know, the fact it's a nice bit of product placement going on there, um, it also is quite a useful idea to keep track of who's singing which part. So the sops are obviously in, in the light blue, the altos are in the green, uh, the tenors in white and the, the bass is in the, uh, in the sort of dark greeny coloured blue. Um, there's also a different pair of glasses. So it's little quirky things like that that... Um, I, uh, I add to the videos when recording them, and it's it's remarkably simple to do. It doesn't take any demonstrable extra time to change my shirt from one part to the next, um, but it does add a lot to the videos. So, um, yeah, that's what I, what I like to do with that. Um, so uh, I'm going to go through and edit the rest of these. I probably won't talk through these much, so I'll, I'll end up cutting out this part of the video. And once they're all synced, uh, we, can, uh, we can cut back in. And finally, we're going to bring in base two.
So we're gonna again we're gonna find out roughly where base two starts. Looks like it hasn't started there, so we split, we chop off the beginning, move it back, and now we So that's a little bit early. Still a fraction early. Fraction early still, let's bring him forward a little bit more. That sounds close enough to me. So finally, we trim it to bring it in line. We mute, we double click, we fade it. So now I've got all eight of the parts are now in the player. But at the moment, they're all on top of each other. Um, let's make sure they're all muted. No, that one's not muted. Um, so they're all on top of each other, so we can't see them all at the moment. Now, Wondershare does give you a very simple way of moving them around. Select the track you want to move, and you move it. It only snaps to the um, edges of the thing. So here it's all free movement. Over there it snaps to the edge as it does there, which can make this part very, very, very fiddly um, to a point I end up spending far too much time on this, proportionally speaking. There is almost certainly a way, in fact, I know for a fact there is, if you go into split screen mode, you can actually have a, a split screen uh, sort of template where I'm pretty sure you just drop the video in and it will split it for you. Unfortunately, it doesn't have one up to eight parts. Um, so I tend to just resize them approximately. So I put the Sopranos in the top left, Altos in the top right, Tenors in the bottom left, and Basses in the bottom right, generally. Of course, there were different, so like the Bluebird, for example, I had all circle stuff, and I was surrounding Kira, who was in the middle, and I've had ones where you can sometimes see the hands. And, you know, how you want to do the layout is entirely up to you. But um, in to keep things relatively simple, um, I'm going to put that <clears throat> at its full size there. We don't want to see my, my loft above it, um, so we're going to make that a little bit smaller. In fact, I'm going to do that with all of them so they're all relatively the same size. We'll make some minor tweaks afterwards. Um, so you can line them on top of each other and you can get a reasonable approximation of the size. Uh, and I think this size will probably be about right. So we're going to make these all match up so they're just that little bit smaller. Because I've recorded in um, portrait mode on my phone, it's very, very tall. Now, um, better video editors than me. I'm really not a video editor. I can do very basic stuff like this to produce uh, videos. And to be fair, it's not really all you need to do for things of this nature. Um, proper video editors, you know, would find better and more competent ways of doing this. But um, for me, this does the job. Now, because the bass tracks are at the are the lowest ones, that means they are they are layered um, furthest up. So if you think of this. Um, for example, let's just take this bass track here. Uh, this one over here, that's the soprano part. Now, the soprano part is quite far up the hierarchy, which means if I move this bass video on top, it's going to cover up the soprano part. So the ones furthest to the bottom are higher up in the hierarchy, if that makes sense. So that bass is going to completely cover that soprano. So with that in mind, you need to consider how you're going to lay them out. So I think these are now the right sizes. So I'm going to pop my bass in there. And my other base is going to go next to him. So it snaps to the bottom, but I'm going to have to slightly overlap that because the last thing we want are little uh, bleed marks. We don't want to see bleed marks at all. Um, now, the lower ones, they're going to have to have some sort of filter on them because, as I say, if we were to put the soprano part up there, it's going to be completely obscured by the base. Uh, so what we're actually going to do is drop the base down slightly, and then we're going to line them up there. And then for the bases and the tenors, we're going to add this filter. So if we go into advanced and click that one, the filter that I found works is if you go 0 0.8 for the height and bring the top up to 0 0.2. And you'll say, oh, that's a tenor video I've actually done there. And you can see it's just cho chopped the, uh, the top off it um, just there. Uh, before we get into that, though, I need to actually no, I can line them up like that. So this is tenor one and he's going to go in that corner there. And then tenor two is going to go into that gap there. Now, as you can see, I have not quite got the sizings right, which is very annoying. Uh, so I'm going to have to undo all of that, get rid of the uh, top part, because at the moment the videos 
are still too big, they're too wide. Um, so I'm going to continue to shrink them down. So let's take him down a little bit further. There probably doesn't need to be much because there are eight of them and they uh, only need to shave off a little bit off each one and that will save us a huge amount of space. If anything, that might even be too much there. Uh, we'll find out in a minute. Turn one down a bit. And again, these don't need to be exactly the same size. It depends how OCD about it you are, to be honest. Um, I can get quite OCD about the pixel perfection of this. Um, but uh, yeah, so each to their own. So let's try it now. So here's base two. Going to pop him there. That looks like it might be OK at that level. Uh, that's ten of one. He's going to go over there. And ten of two going to go in there right so it's there's still some overlap but it's now a more acceptable level of overlap in fact we can get around this by just shifting the ones on the edge slightly inside the border uh and now we pop him in there and in there in there there we go so we can see there's a little bit of overlap on each one and actually that's kind of what you want to aim for just that little bit of overlap um so now we are going to um Add, oh, we're not resize that one. Oh, that's a soprano. That's why. Uh, oh, that might be all right. Where's my other tenor gone then? Oh, he's over there. Um, ah, right. So actually, no, I was I was about right for bring these guys back out again. So little tiny bit of overlap. Little tiny bit of overlap. Uh, actually, it's quite a big bit of overlap there. So let's bring him. We are still going to need to bring these slidings, so I can't be bothered to resize them all again. Um, bring him into there. Let's bring him to there. Let's bring him to there. And that looks about right to me. Final thing, I now need to add a um, that filter that I mentioned before, uh, the masking effect. Uh, so 0 0.8 and 2, and it'll chop out the loft. Advanced. Uh, height. 0.8 and 2. Same here, advanced. 0.8 and 0.2. And finally, down to 1, advanced. Mask effect, 0.8 and 2. This is what I mean when I say it's quite a primitive piece of software. Now, remember what I said before, these are going to be underneath the lower parts, and that's not really enough space to show off the uh, the upper part. So I am going to have to move these down a little bit further manually uh, until it looks like there's a reasonable amount of space. So it's approximately halfway. And I think that's OK. That looks all right to me. And this is where you need to line them up manually because, of course, you haven't got the uh, the snap at the bottom of the frame uh, to, to guide you here. And this is where I've, I've probably lost hours of time uh, trying to get these all to line up absolutely perfectly. Um, it's, again, like I say, it depends how bad your session over tiny, tiny pixel perfect details are. Um, that looks okay to me, I think. So from there, we can slot in the other parts. So let's take Soprano 1, first of all. Soprano 1 is there, apparently. And we can just slot Soprano 1 in there like that. And I think these could possibly move down just a little bit more. Let's give Soprano slightly more space to work in. I still. Uh, nope. And of course, because it's a low resolution um, preview window, it's very difficult to um, actually see sometimes. That's still not quite right, but um, I'll do. Um, bring him down. This is, and like I say, this is really the, the the most fiddly part of the process. And how much time you want to spend on this uh, is will be determined by you know how how obsessive you get over little tiny details and how uh, how much of a perfectionist you are. Of course, there are probably better video editing. Um, there is probably better video editing software out there that will. Um, take the hassle out of doing this um and uh i'd certainly welcome any suggestions anybody who has got experience doing stuff like this um imovie i know is good but it tends to be it's a mac 
restricted program. I have got a Mac, but it's old and knackered. Um, I much prefer doing uh, this one on my Windows PC. Um, so let's pop that Alto in up the road there, and let's just shrink him down so that the borders approximately line up. Uh, there we go, that'll do. Um, Alto 1 is there, and again, Alto 2 is going to take dominance there because it's uh, further up, further down the hierarchy. Down a bit more. Let's pop Alto 1 in there, and again, let's shrink Alto 1 down so it looks like it's the same resolution. There we go, sort of. That's a bit wider. I'll do. Bring them up a bit. That's Similar-ish height. But you go through a court. I move around quite a lot when I when I do these these videos, so it might it might change throughout. Um, Soprano two next, and let's line him up. Up a bit higher. Yeah, that looks okay to me. And finally, Soprano 1. Down that video too much. And range how you like. And that there is a very simple but effective arrangement. Now, if you want to add um, text for the parts to it, which I, I often do, um, simple way to do that, you just go um, text and uh, lower thirds, I think is the one I use. I'm going to add this one in. Um, there, if I'd been sensible, I'd have picked a a, a track that had a, the parts already pre-prepared on them. But apparently, I'm not sensible. So <laughs> there we are. Um, let's get rid of that. Uh, the font I tend to use here is Baskerville Oldface, um, and you've got to get the fade outs right. Again, this is another very fiddly one, and depends how OCD you are um, about your your fading. Uh, Let's go with that, and then I have that style, and then I just type soprano, and there we go. There's the soprano text. Pump that up there, make it sopranos, and then you simply copy, paste, paste. And paste, and then you rename and relocate. So Alto, let's grab the Alto text and shift it underneath the Altos. That right there, is that right? A bit high, actually, isn't it? Be on the line. Come here. There we go. And then Senna, I grab that and pop it. Come on. Really funny about selecting stuff sometimes. Uh, there's the tenor. Let's pop that just there. And finally, the base. Grab that, double click, and move underneath. The bases like that. Then you simply extend out the uh, text objects for the uh, creation of the piece. So, uh, that looks like it's where the ending was. So I'm going to trim the ends of the videos down in just a second. And there. And there. Ah, so all of those texts have got a little animator on them, which we don't want because I think that, well, I don't, I don't want, you You might prefer it with it on there, but I think it looks a bit ridiculous, to be honest. So we're going to go animation. I'm going to have to do this for each one of these now. I'm going to go double click for no animation. Uh, or rather, actually, it's not no animation. It's a fade that I want, isn't it? Fade rather than a bounce up. So advanced. And animation fade. And advanced animation fade, and finally on the baseline. So if this is being tedious to watch, it's also quite tedious to uh, to put together. So apologies if uh, um, if I've not made this any more exciting than it than it is.
There they go, they fade out. And you can hear that really clunky ending that I've done. Um, but yeah, as, as explained before. We're then just going to split the videos at the at the end of it and then delete the final bit. Split and split. So the whole process is really just about synchronizing things together um, in a way that is um, to, to, to make it effective. So you've got the, the control to do the advanced sound edit with the, with the sound um, and then arrange the videos how you like. And then it fades out. Um, and say the sound is a bit is a bit rubbish. We're just going to have to come to peace with that, or I'm going to have to come to peace with that. Let's see if I just put a little fade out on the end of this over the last 1.5 seconds. See if that makes any difference. A bit not great. Let's make it a bit shorter. But if I couldn't make it work in Audacity, there's no reason to think I'll make it work here. Yeah, it it just sounds really not good. If I make it a really long fade out, four seconds. I don't know if that sounds better or worse. Um, I'm going to leave the fade out off for now. I don't think this is going to be one of my official videos anyway. I'll just release it at the end of the tutorial so you can see um, what, it, what I've done. So I'll be slightly happier with that. So you see what I mean about it being out of sync, though, um, because there are so many things going on. So um, let's just hit save and then have a quick look through the whole thing. Make sure it all looks about right. That is that centralized? It doesn't look centralized. Apparently it is. Um, there we go. And that's how you do it. That's how you get ten bends. You put them all on the on the screen together. So this next part is um, will will take a while. I will probably cut away from the video and then come back to to show it all completed at the end because this is the export, and the export always takes ages. Um, it, I haven't timed it exactly, but it's about a minute, and there are eight videos. So what it has to do it has to go through and process it all um, to make it not do that stuttery thing. This will probably take about twenty minutes. Um, to export. So I will stop the video um, and uh, tune back in with you once it's done. But to do it, incidentally, it's just export and then you pick your output folder, uh, come down, all this, capitalize it correctly. Oh, love divine. And export. And you get this screen. That's going to take a little while to do. Um, so uh, put the camera back on now. Uh, yeah, so I'll come back in hopefully before uh, the end of this uh, conversion and uh, sign off at the end of that and we'll speak again then. Okay, it looks as though the video is about to finish exporting, which is good. You get that little ping sound to let you know that it is done. So let's go and have a look at the output. So that's going to my Wondershare project output. Come down, I love divine, and we can see if this has worked. So as you can see here, I've not quite got the pixel perfect precision of the first base is a little bit higher than the second tenor, so they're a bit low. But that is a sort of, as far as I'm concerned, an acceptable level of tolerance. Um, let's just skip to the end. I'll play this in full at the end of this uh, the end of this video. So again, you can hear that really awful audio clunk. I keep banging on about that because I'm annoyed I did it in the in the tutorial, but uh, hopefully I've explained that away in the edit. And um, that's the end of the video. So um, that's kind of all there is to it. I'm going to the right window. Let's go back to Wondershare. Um, that's all the all the all the, I say, that's all there is to it. And there's quite a lot to to take in, and there's a, a lot of stuff that I've done there. Um, but I will put links to all this software into the description um, and in the hope that uh, you can get, uh, you know, have an attempt at doing something like this yourself, either yourself as an individual, or it might be that you've got um, 
a choir that you're a part of and you might want to say come on let's let's give this a go and you, if you can find someone who could put a piano track together um send it out to your your choir members it's something i'm i've been meaning to do with with um with my own choirs i need to find a, a piece of music to do first of all but it's something i i'm certainly uh, planning and then i can Put the, put the edit together at this end even if you just do it as as audio rather than with the video because the video is is quite fiddly um and so certainly audacity is a free piece of software wondershare isn't uh, but there are free uh, video editing software out there so give it give it a bit of a google and see what you see what you come up with uh, wondershare actually incidentally limits you to 10 video tracks on one uh, on one screen, certainly in this version of Wondershare that I'm using here, which was a problem when I came to do this marriage because there were 12 voices on that one. Um, and the, the way I got around that is actually I did the first nine, exported that video and then bought it into a new project and then synced the other three on. So it's very fiddly uh, and almost certainly not the best way of doing it. Um, but uh, that's that's my process for how I how I do it. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial um, and it's been very nice to, to talk to you virtually. Um, even if, if it's just me talking to myself for, for all appearances sake. Um, I hope that there is some information in there that you can maybe use for, for your own uh, projects, even if you want to have a little go at it. Um, if you have got any any questions, if I've not been clear about something or there's something that's confusing or you're having difficulty with the software, I'm very, very happy to answer any questions if you want to leave uh, questions in the comments or um, you could probably get me on, on Facebook as well. Um, all details of stuff like that is going to be down in the in the uh, in the description. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I do hope that you have got something out of it. Hopefully, it's been an enjoyable experience for you to to see my creation process. And if um, you uh, want to have a go at doing it yourself, I would be I would absolutely love to see um, the uh, uh, and anything you want wanted to attempt yourself. If you do, uh, do send me a message or leave a comment in YouTube. I'd um, I'd love to to, to check it out. Um, so that is about it. I will finish this video with the, the finished performance of Come Down, O Love Divine. And um, thank you again for all your support in watching these videos, sharing these videos, uh, commenting, and uh, especially to everyone who is supporting me through Patreon. Uh, again, links to that will be in the description if you feel that is something that you would like to do. Um, but for me, for now, that is about it for this, which is going to be my music for lockdown number 50. Um, so this is it's Sunday at the moment. So this is actually going to be released tomorrow, which is Monday. Um, so, uh, yeah, I hope it's been enjoyable. Uh, it's been a lovely afternoon project for me to do. And um, I look forward to uh, seeing you another time. In the meanwhile, stay safe and uh, thank you very much indeed.